Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're here at World Markets 2021. It's the first one for a couple of years, but as you can see, and you may not be able to see, we're here on the Maltese stand, Malta being one of the UK's favourite overseas destinations. I'm delighted to have Clayton with me, who's the Minister of Tourism for, for Malta. Good afternoon, Clayton. Good afternoon, and let me tell you what a pleasure it is to be back here at the WTM, whereby, yes, the UK is one of our favourite markets. In fact, this year it's back as the top market, one of our top source markets, uh, whereby tourists are coming back to Malta. Marvellous, that's really good. Clayton, one of the things that the pandemic has done is allowed tourism authorities such as your own to maybe rethink what they're doing, uh, maybe to reset, reboot. Uh, have you done much of that or have you just tried to keep what you were good at and continue? In fact, during the pandemic, this is exactly what we have been working on. We have set out our targets and we have set out a strategy for the next 10 years built on three main pillars. Recover, rethink, revitalize. First of all, we are looking at recovering from the pandemic, whereby we have set out a recovery program aimed at bringing back the numbers towards Malta. And there we have, first of all, established that connectivity remains key for our island. And we have worked hard to ensure that Malta remains well connected to a number of countries. And now I believe that we are back to pre-pandemic levels with regards to not just flights, but also routes coming in and out of Malta. Furthermore, we have worked hard on establishing a number of niches. So after managing the pandemic in a good way, and I do believe that this has been central to our tourism industry as well, because the fact that now we have 93% of our population, which is fully vaccinated, is ensuring that Malta remains a safe country, not just in terms of COVID, mind you, but also in other terms, such as criminality, which remains at a very low level in Malta. Now we are looking back at establishing our tourism industry in such a way that it remains sustainable for the long term. And this is where the rethinking process has already started. We are looking to ensure that quality and quantity of tourists go hand in hand. We cannot have one without having the other. And an example of this are the number of tourism niches which we are working on, such as diving, for example, where we are investing very much in, in the diving industry and ensuring that we have a better product than what we had in the previous years. We are also working hard to establish Malta as a sports tourism center, whereby we are having a number of people who are interested in organizing their sports events in Malta, bringing top athletes to our country so that they can either organize training camps or as organize sports events in Malta. Another element which we are working on is faith tourism. Uh, Malta is well known for a number of churches and chapels which we have. There are 365 churches and chapels. So that's one church for every day. If you were to count the number of places of worship in total starting from the megalithic temples up until today, there are well over 500 places of worship in all of Malta. So whether a person is starting out on his uh, spiritual journey or whether he wants to, to take a different experience than what maybe he's used to, Malta is definitely the place to be uh, both now and also in the coming months and years. Well, it's good. And that means, you know, of, everybody uses the phrase build back better. You're ahead of the game here. You've got a 10 year build back better plan already. Yes. Excellent. One of the things that's, you know, obviously people are talking about and as an island country that you'll be more aware of this than most is is climate change, of rising sea levels, of temperature changes, catastrophic uh, meteorological events. Um, a lot of people are saying that the tourism industry and particularly the aviation industry needs to start supporting a policy of you know, maybe flying less and, and staying longer. Is that something Malta has considered and would support? First of all, Malta remains fully committed to climate change action, which needs to be done, and also to sustainability. For us, sustainability is not just a buzzword but it will be the modus operandi of how we can operate in the coming years. And so we remain committed also to the commitments which have been reached during the COP26 in the past hours, in fact. Um, just a few few meters away from here, yeah, literally, yeah. I mean, up in Scotland, where um, the, the, the world leaders have been meeting, including the Maltese Prime Minister, which shows our full commitment towards climate change action and the fact that action needs to be taken now and not at a later stage. With regards to the aviation and the travel industry as a whole, I do believe that we need to make sure that this remains sustainable. 
So rather than just focusing on one aspect of the actions which need to be taken, uh, we think that this is a multifaceted uh, approach needs to be taken and an evolving solution needs to be found, like managing better the assets which are found within the travel industry, such as co-chairing, for example. And in some cases, rather than being competitors, countries and perhaps even airlines, they can collaborate more to make better use of the seats which are available in order to ensure that connectivity between the countries remains on a sustainable level while ensuring that the commitments which have been agreed upon are reached, if not in time, at least even before. Because our world needs to, 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 to be taken into consideration. Our planet is our home after all. And we need to consider future generations and their rights and, and our duties and obligations towards them. So all of this needs to be taken into account while making sure that the travel industry, while it bounces back better and to build back a stronger industry in the coming years, we make it sustainable for future generations. Good. It sounds like a, it sounds like a, a very, very good note, particularly this week with COP26 yeah. going on in Glasgow. Thank you very much, Clay. Thank you. Cheers.